And good afternoon from Burgess Snowfield at JSU Stadium. This fine facility has never been decked out for February football before, but it is today, as Jacksonville State is set for their OVC opener against Tennessee Tech. And as odd as it may sound, welcome into Sunday afternoon football here on ESPN+. Plus. I'm Mickey Shadricks, joined by Butch Barker. Well, Butch, Tennessee Tech got their conference opener under their belt last week with a win against Austin P. Jacksonville State's game at Tennessee State was snowed out, but unlike Tech, the Gamecocks did play four games in the fall. Who has the advantage coming into this one? Well, had Tech not been able to play last week, it would definitely be advantage JSU. Because they played last week, got that big win, I think it kind of balances out, Mickey. Usually from a coaching standpoint, you see the biggest improvement from game one to game two. I think everything balances out in that respect. Should have a great football game here today. Let's take a look at impact players for today's matchup. First off, for Tennessee Tech, we're going to look at running back David Gist. Just the workhorse for Tech last week. 20 carries in the game for 75 yards. His big impact, though, Mickey, he was able to get into the end zone twice and lead this team to a big victory over Austin B. Meanwhile, for Jacksonville State, tight end Trey Berry is quite a weapon for the Gamecocks. Well, I tell you, Trey, Trey Berry's a big target. Stands six feet, seven inches tall. Trey Berry only trails Rusty Fuller by 184 yards to, to overtake him for the, the receiving lead by tight end for Jacksonville State in their history. Well, it's still technically winter in Alabama, but it feels like spring today. Perfect weather for this conference opener for the Gamecocks as they host Tennessee Tech. We'll kick it off from Burgess Snowfield when we come back. Hello, I'm Chad Miles, host of Kentucky Field. And getting set for the kickoff, Jacksonville State, Tennessee Tech from Burgess Snowfield here on this Sunday afternoon in Jacksonville, Alabama. Gamecocks won the coin toss, defer until the second half, so they will kick it off to Tennessee Tech to get us started. There's a look at the weather we mentioned. Technically, it's still winter time in the state of Alabama, but you wouldn't know it just by sitting in JSU Stadium today. Temperature right around 80 degrees, winds at about 15 miles an hour. Butch, when you and I arrived a couple hours ago, the wind was really whipping up down on the field. Just like a lot of stadiums, this, this bowl effect, when you get down on the field, if that wind gets going it can definitely have an impact on the game but overall though considering it's february it's a nice day today beautiful day for football the wind already blowing the ball off the tee that is something that i think all of these teams are going to have to deal with more especially in the in the southeast they're going to have to deal with windy conditions this time of year that you normally wouldn't see week in and week out in the fall well, Tennessee Tech knocked off Jacksonville State last season up in Cookville on homecoming, 37-27. That win by the Golden Eagles snapped a seven-game winning streak by JSU in this series. So the Gamecocks hoping to start a new winning streak against the Golden Eagles here this afternoon. And again, before we can kick this one off, the win blows the ball off the tee again. So I think the Gamecocks are going to have to bring in a holder. or we could just keep doing this over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> and we see they will hold as Jemias Presley comes in and will hold first, then cover the kick. And Karadzic booms it into the end zone over the head of Metrius Fleming. So Tennessee Tech will come out on the touchback, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. We mentioned in our open, Tennessee Tech won their conference opener last week against Austin P. but Butch, it wasn't exactly an offensive clinic. They only wound up with 156 yards of total offense in that game. They won the turnover battle, though, 4-1 over the defending OBC champs, and that had a big impact in them being able to win that game last week. I tell you, there was some really, really hard licks that were passed in that ball game. Tech able to force four fumbles, came up with two of those, the difference in the ball game, along with the two interceptions. First play of the game is a give up the middle to Gist, and he is hit immediately by Nicario Harper, along with Marshall Clark combining on the tackle. Gain of four 
on the first play from scrimmage for the Golden Eagles. Ran the ball 55% of the time in last week's game. Look for them to do more of the same. Had some success doing that. Keep the ball away from Jacksonville State, whoever their opponent happens to be. I think that's going to be their game plan the entire season. A huge win for the Golden Eagles last week against Austin P. And first pass of the game is behind Metrius Fleming, the preseason OVC wide receiver, was the intended target for Bailey Fisher that time, but Fisher misfiring there, so it'll bring up a third down and six for the Golden Eagles. The far side of the field is going to be where the wind most affects the throws, punts, all of that type of thing. A little more protected on the home side than on the far side. Saw that one sail for sure as Fisher released it with the wind behind it. Austin P sacked Fisher seven times last week, so the Gamecocks hope to be able to put some pressure on the Tennessee Tech quarterback this afternoon. They won't get a chance this time because they won't need it as DJ Coleman comes through and takes the running back down for virtually no gain. So the Gamecocks with a three and out, good start for them defensively today. Charleston back to return the punt for the Gamecock. Mickey, this is going to be a, a, an area you really need to keep an eye on. The wind is going to be moving the football. Last week, Tech averaged 38 yards per punt. Big thing here, you got to come up with a clean catch. And a good snap. And a left-footed kicker shanks this one. It goes out of bounds near midfield, so a poor kick for Tennessee Tech. And Jacksonville State is going to have outstanding field position for their first offensive series of the day. But before they snap it, we're going to step aside for a break. Good start for the Gamecock defense to get the ball back to the offense. Well, Jacksonville State set to snap it for the first time offensively here this afternoon. There you see Zion Webb getting the start today at quarterback. We'll talk a lot about the Gamecock quarterback situation as the game progresses. And a good start for Webb as he connects with Logan McVay, the redshirt junior from Demopolis, who advances it across midfield officially into Golden Eagle territory for a gain of four. It'll be second down and six at the Tech 49. Four punt giving Jacksonville State great field position. Not much here though on the second down play as we saw some of the impact players for today and take another look at them again. And Josh Samuel Butch, last time JSU did play a game last fall against uh, Samuel rushed for 163 yards against FIU. And this defensive line led by Tucker. Outstanding job last week. Pass intended for Dave Russell. In official will rule it incomplete. Well, I think he's going to rule him down, Mickey. Okay. Well, they, may, they may overrule it, but it's going to be short of the first down yardage. I think when he makes the catch, his knee is on the ground. Going on the field is a completed pass. He was down it before the ball came loose. Looks like an incompletion, though. But his knee definitely was down if it, they rule it as a completion. Jacksonville State hurries up on fourth and one to go for it at the Tennessee Tech 44. And they're going to get it. Josh Samuel, the young man we just spoke about in the big game he had against FIU last fall, picks up a Gamecock first down to the 40. And that was a bang, bang ruling by the official on whether that was a, actually a catch or not, but the Gamecocks take advantage. Easily could have been ruled an incompletion, could not have been ruled a fumble. Again, when he made the reception, if they ruled it that way, he was definitely down because his knee was already on the ground. Webb looking to throw. Airs it out down the near sideline. Great coverage on the boundary Free with, play. The, with the intended receiver, Mike Petway, and a flag back at the 42-yard line. Tech jumped a little early on defense that time. Defense, number 92. Five-yard penalty, still first down. JSU starting with exceptional field position after the poor punt. Three and out by the offense, a terrible punt. JSU starts just shy of the 50-yard line. 
takes four downs to get that first down, but again, a free play here. Webb laid it up. And Mickey, we got to talk about Webb. Zion coming in, your, your starting quarterback as we watch this play. Mix up here for sure. And Webb will be taken off his feet at the 33 yard line by Tennessee Tech's Zach Warwick, the redshirt sophomore linebacker. Both the receivers to the side Webb was looking to were blocking. Neither one of them was looking to receive the ball. Webb was trying to throw it. But Mickey, what I was talking about, Cooper breaks his ankle last year, first quarter of the JSU's last game in the, in the fall. Usually you'd have about three or four days to get your backup ready. This time JSU had three months. But Webb, a lot of experience in that backup role for the Gamecocks. Right now, putting him in position with short passes, running the ball quite a bit. Not asking a lot of him right now. Trey Berry's first catch of the day, and Butch talked about how Berry is creeping up closer to becoming the all-time leader in receiving yards from the tight end position here at Jacksonville State. Samuel gets the handoff and gets very little, maybe a yard as he bulls his way inside the 25-yard line, tackled there by Tennessee Tech's Seth Carlisle. JSU had some success the last three games of the fall rushing the football. Not a lot the early on here today. Of course, Tech with an exceptional job last week in stopping the run and forcing turnovers. Again, four fumbles by Austin P. Tech able to recover two of those and intercept two passes. Second down and nine. Webb looking to throw again. Goes toward the end zone for Trey Berry and overshoots him by just a couple of yards. And the closest defender there was Jamal Boyd, the sophomore defensive back out of Athens, Georgia. Barry had a step. I think the wind gets this one, Mickey, on that far side of the field. Watch it take off. Out of even Barry's reach, again, he stands 6'7". Ahmad Edwards was wide open coming across the middle of the field that time. Webb didn't see him. Would have had a big game, possibly a touchdown, had he found the open receiver there in the middle of the field. Third down and nine. Here comes the blitz from Tech. Webb gets the pass away. It's caught at around the 15-yard line by JSU's Ahmad Edwards. And that's going to be, should be another Gamecock first down. Yes, it is. What, two big conversions here. Once on fourth down, once on third down. Moves as a change for the Gamecocks. Keeps this drive alive. Nice throw and catch. Good protection. We have had time. First down Gamecocks at the 21. Excuse Good. me, at the 16. Good start by Zion Webb as Tennessee Tech jumps off again, or we'll see if the defender was drawn off. The ruling on the play was a first down. Previous play is under further review. Okay, this will be interesting because I noticed on the replay, the receiver obviously had to come back for the football, so the officials want to take another look at this because it's very close. I initially thought he was short of the yards to gain, but both the officials were pretty quick to mark it where he had enough of a pickup to move the chain. So again, it'll be interesting to see what replay show. Take a look at it, see if we have a good angle. There's the throw. And again, you can see the receiver coming back. I'm gonna have to agree with you, Mickey. I think it initially, he definitely looks like he's, he's more like at the 17 than at the 16. This may be our best look here. I think here. so. Catches it there. Mm. Is his knee down? Where the ball is, I think he's going to be short. Question is, is there enough for them to change the call? That's true. And where, where was the ball when his knee first hit the turf. It was definitely a bang, bang play. But back to my point I was going to make, Zion Webb got to feel good about the start for him throwing the ball. He's four for five for 24 yards. And, you know, when he came to JSU, he was pretty much really one-dimensional, Butch. He was great with his legs. Uh, dual threat quarterback is kind of how his label was when he got here. But uh, Coach Gross in his Tuesday press conference this week said they don't plan on running Zion a lot today. They, they are confident in his ability to throw the football and That's move the offense the through the, the air. Stands. First down. So again, not enough to overturn this. 
Right. Wasn't confirmed. It, it just stand, the, the ruling stands, which means, again, there wasn't enough to overturn that ruling. But what going back to your point, not only are they not running Webb because he can throw the ball well, which he can, but they're also not running him because they have no experience backing up Zion Webb. Yes. So, so uh, yeah, they're going to be careful with him if they can. Webb runs it here. They must have heard us talking about it, Butch, because uh, Webb takes it for the first time in a, a very good game down close to the five. They're going to spot him down at the six. Well, again, Zion definitely not unfamiliar when it comes to running the football. A nice read on the play, makes a couple of pe people miss, picks up three or four extra yards, first and goal Gamecocks. And he runs it again and should have the first down based on where the official is walking in with the spot. Needed to get to the five yard line and that is where they're going to spot it. It's going to be exact. Yeah, and they are moving, so it'll be first and goal. Now, he was just shy of that yard to gain on the previous run. And of course, a conversation about the JSU quarterback situation isn't complete unless you bring in the name Zarek Cooper, which we will talk about him as the game goes along as well. This pass almost intercepted. Trey Berry was the closest game cock to it, but it was almost picked by Cameron Hudson. Wow, that one was behind Berry. He's trying to take advantage of Berry's length. Again, he stands six, seven, long arms, but this one's behind him and closer to the defensive back than it is to the receiver. Surprised though that the Gamecocks chose to throw on first and goal from the five. Boy, the wind really picking up down on Burgess Snowfield. Samuel picks his way down inside the two. I tell you, Josh Samuel is, a, is an impressive running back, Butch. He's listed as 5'11", 215. Uh, he is a thick physical runner. He is, and, and we've got to talk about this offensive line and the improvement that they've made over the last two seasons. Four juniors and a sophomore starting up front for Coach Cross, and they paved the way for Samuel to walk in untouched for the first points of the afternoon go to Jacksonville State. Well, I tell you, that I, I actually believe I could have gotten through that gaping hole. Nice job up front by the Gamecocks. Again, two key conversions, one on fourth down, one on third down, keep the drive alive. JSU scores first with a touchdown on their opening possession. And here is Karajic on to attempt the extra point. The freshman place kicker. And he puts it right through there. So Jacksonville State goes 53 yards in 14 plays. And Josh Samuel caps it off with a two yard touchdown run. 8.02 left here in our first quarter. Jacksonville State takes a seven nothing lead here over Tennessee Tech. Good afternoon at Burgess Snowfield as they lead Tennessee Tech seven nothing. The defense getting a three and out. Then really the key to this whole drive, we'll see the touchdown run here again by Samuel. But Butch, you really gotta go back to the poor punt by Tennessee Tech. Basically JSU only had to cover half the field on their first scoring drive. Yeah, I mean, if you're deep in your own territory, you don't go for it on that fourth and short that they were able to convert and keep the drive alive. So yeah, the punt, the miscue on the punt by Tech enabled the Gamecocks to continue that drive, punch it in the end zone for seven points. So as far as special teams go, the third phase of football, so far so good for JSU. Two booming kicks by Karajic into the end zone, forcing touchbacks, the poor punt by Tennessee Tech, and of course JSU connecting on the extra point. So can't leave out those special teams. No, not ever. And I think JSU has a really, really good one in Karajic, only a freshman. They've got a bright future special team-wise with that guy. Look at the impact players as far as defensively for JSU and offensively for Tennessee Tech. Yeah, and you've got to stop the run if you're the Gamecocks. If you can do that, you're going to get good field position if you don't turn the ball over and those types of things. On the other hand, for Tech, you've got to be able to run the football, move the chains. Fisher on the quarterback keep, and nice gain. Picks up about eight yards across the 30-yard line taken down by JSU's Zach Woodard. And again, the key for the Golden Eagles 
You have got to be able to sustain drives, use clock, not give Jacksonville State great field position like you did on the previous drive. Starting this one off with a good gain on first down for sure. Gave Zion Webb a short field, an opportunity to build some confidence, which he did. He was four for five, four for six, I should say, on that scoring drive, passing for JSU. Fisher in trouble, gonna go down behind the line of scrimmage. Big Anthony Nesby, the sophomore from Atlanta, was coming at him like a laser. Fisher had no place to go. All three receivers were blanketed by the secondary for the Gamecock, but you have got to throw that football away. You picked up seven yards on first down. Now you take the big loss, setting yourself up in the kind of situation you had on the opening drive, third down and seven, and able to move the chains. Not what Tech is looking to have to do over and over again today. That got the crowd into it too. Third down and seven. Fisher steps up in the pocket, got room to run, and Fisher is going to get the first down. And if you're a Tennessee Tech fan across the way, which they did bring some folks down from Cookville, they take a deep breath right there because if they would have given the ball back to JSU there, you could really sense the momentum building for Jacksonville State. Big scramble here. Great decision. Step up in the pocket, make the one guy miss. Just barely got enough yardage to move the chains, but Fisher able to do that, keeps this drive alive. Mickey, pretty much what you said, they get a stop there, you pretty much are down 14 points. Mm -hmm. Gamecocks were showing blitz off the left end by Colby Ball Fuqua. Start. Offense, number 57, five yard penalty, still first down. But then you had the all OVC preseason Mike Rhodes move the left guard. Yep, that's just a mental mistake. Again, preseason OVC pick. Cost his team five yards on that one. Makes it even more difficult to sustain this drive. I look for him to come out throwing the ball here, Mickey. Normally on first down, they, their choice is to run the ball, but now first and 15, I think you gotta have something bigger than that. Gotta get Metrius Fleming involved, the preseason all OVC wide receiver. He's been targeted once, but the first pass attempt to him was behind him. A little screen action here on the right side, executed very well catching the football was the tight end, Adam Browner. Injured Gamecock down on the field as well. Timeout for an injured player. Timeout on the field for the injured player, but they get the penalty yardage back plus about four yards. A concern here for the JSU injury. And that is, looks to be Feaster for Jacksonville State. Really didn't see what happened. I'm, I'm assuming he, getting, he got his legs rolled up on. Certainly hope he's okay. We'll go to a media timeout. The junior corner, Malik Feaster being attended to. Now we'll take a break while they take a look at Feaster and hopefully come back with good news for this young man. Well, we said going to break, we would hopefully come back with good news on Malik Feaster, but unfortunately I don't think we have it as we see the play again and here Fisher takes the snap on second down the ball came out of there JSU is returning it the official I don't think I heard a whistle it's Colby Fuqua who did this against Florida State last fall is this a touchdown there's no way he was on the ground it's this is not the NFL you can't get up Ruling and run on the play was a fumble recovered by the defense for a touchdown I go along with the fumble recovery, but he was down when he made the recovery. Mix up with Gist, Fisher and Gist not on the same page on the handoff. And I don't know, Butch, I think he, he, think he got it out of there. I know he got it out, but I'm saying he can't, he's on, he's on the ground after he got the fumble, so he can't get back up and run. You can in the NFL, but not in college. Take a look. He gets the ball, but now he's down. So I do believe it's going to be a fumble, but definitely not going to be a touchdown. Well, the official blows the whistle before they snap for the extra point. 
I'm not sure if Tennessee Tech called a timeout or if the officials initi initiated the stoppage in play. But there is a discussion going on, as you see, between our referee and the Tennessee State sideline. Yeah, like I say, there, there's absolutely no way that by rule this should result in a touchdown. Head coach Dwayne Alexander wants an explanation. Is being challenged by the Tennessee Tech coach. All right, Butch, you say no. I'm not so sure. Oh, it's 100%. He, All right, you, you, 100%. Absolutely okay. Cannot get up and run the ball after you have possession and we're on the ground in college. And take a look. He does, I think, get the ball before Fisher is down. And, but he's down right there. Is he touched down? You don't have to be. Okay. That's the NFL. <laughs> by, by letter of the law, you say it's it's got to come back. 100% has to be. Now, the, the only other question is, was Fisher down? And I don't think he was. Yeah, I, think I think it's think going to either. be JSU's ball. But absolutely, you cannot get up and run. You're down right there. You're down. And what about the mix-up between Jis, the running back, and Fisher? Well, you know, last Rocky week. Rocky start here for them offensively. Very much so. Last week, they win. They upset Austin P because they won the turnover game. They look completely out of sync here in this first quarter today. And, and Mickey, again, in the opening, we talked about that, that from a coaching standpoint, most of the time you see the biggest improvement from week one to, to week two. It's actually been just the opposite for the Golden Eagles here opening up on the road against Jacksonville State. So already a couple of interesting situations that have occurred. We had the the uh, the review on the first down pass for JSU that wound up standing. And you think this won't stand, the touchdown's gonna come off, which they actually haven't put it on the board yet, but you believe this will come back, it'll be JSU ball. I think so. I, I don't I don't think there was enough evidence that Fisher was down before the ball came out, but you absolutely cannot advance that ball. After review, Jacksonville State did recover the fumble. However, number 23 was down. The ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First and 10, Jacksonville State. Please reset the game clock to five minutes, nine seconds. And they got it correct. You got it correct. Well, it was easy to get correct when you see the when play. When you know the rule book. But, you know, I don't know how, <laughs> how that – all of the officials missed that, just to be honest with you. I mean, he, he turns a somersault. He knows he can't Well, the ball. right at that moment, I think there was a lot of uncertainty. Everything just kind of stood still, but, but no whistle was blown. No, so you're right. So did the right thing. Oh Here is God. West, a gaping hole up the middle. First carry of the day for the junior from Douglasville, Georgia, Uriah West. And I tell you, you talk about Samuel and West. Quite a one-two punch. As a matter of fact, last time JSU played, both of these guys rushed for over 100 yards against FIU. But look at the gaping hole that he had to run through there. That is absolutely unbelievable that, that you could open up a space eight yards wide for your running back to run through. All star, offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty, still first down. All right, this offensive line, you talked about it, much improved up front. They've got some size up there. I know number 52, Josh Wegener. You'll see him right there, the right guard. Talk a little bit about his strength. Oh, you know a little bit about what this guy can do. Well, I, I've just seen this guy, and I'm telling you, he is he's not real tall, <laughs> but that son of a gun is as strong as anybody is, that I've ever seen play that position. You know, Coach Gross just – Winces when he sees his quarterback take a shot like that, and we've got an injured tech player down at the Time 30 on the play. Yeah, and you talk about Cangelosi, another one that's been a mainstay at center for the Gamecocks. This, this bunch was much maligned, and rightfully so, mm -hmm. when they first took over, but uh, wow, have they ever improved. Watch the hit here, right there. Mm. Hit made that time by Tennessee Tech's Seth Carlisle, it was kind of a high blow. Carlisle admit, admit there was no nothing illegal going on, it's just the spin move and 
wound up colliding with Webb up high, so fortunately Zion's okay. Yeah, like you say, that's a big, big question mark for the Gamecocks is if Webb were to go out, what's your backup situation? I mean, you know who's coming in, but he has absolutely no game experience. Here we see the spin move again, and I think the JSU offensive coaches will make sure they tell their quarterback to get on the ground in those because situations. Because Tennessee and Tech won the challenge. They still have three timeouts left for the half. Relaford able to put some weight on the leg, unlike Feaster was able to do when he was helped off the field before. So maybe Relaford will be able to turn, return. He's a redshirt junior from Fitzgerald, Georgia. Yeah, a lot better walking off than, than Feaster. Feaster not able to put any weight on that injured leg as he exited the field. So after all of that, second down and nine for the Gamecocks. And here is West again. And he's inside the 25. They're gonna mark him down at the 23. So a gain of four. It'll set up third down and about six to go for the Gamecocks. Tech pretty much has got to come up with a stop here and at worst force a field goal to attempt. They cannot afford to go down by 14. And if you're JSU, do you even kick in this win? I mean, it is really whipping up down on the field. Offside tech. Free play, and it's picked off in the end zone, but it's not going to matter. This is like the third time we've seen this out of the tech defensive front. And that's going to give JSU a very short distance to go now on third down. Again, so many mental mistakes by Tennessee Tech in their second game of the year here. Offside, defense number 99. Five yard penalties will be enough for a first down. I mean, Webb did the right thing just throwing it up because even if it's intercepted, obviously it's not going to count as an interception. But what a difference to go from third and six to now third and one you probably go for it on fourth down, even if you don't make it here. That was Jalen Gladney, this senior out of Birmingham, jumping offside. So third down and one. Correction, be third down and one. West gets the call, and did he get that ball across the goal line? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Uriah West. So that one-two punch at running back, as you've got West and also Josh Samuel with touchdowns here in this first quarter. A little bit of a trap on the inside by the Gamecocks, and again, West goes untouched until he's inside the five-yard line. Gamecocks completely dominating in the middle of that line here late in the first quarter. And Karajic, good on the extra point. He's two for two here in this first quarter. Another look at the touchdown. Wow, what a gaping hole. And a good run by West. Good job stretching out with both hands on the football to get it into the end zone and JSU's second touchdown of the day. 53 yards on the first touchdown drive. Butch, they only had to cover 40 yards on this touchdown drive because of the turnover. So two short fields to work with and the Gamecocks take advantage. Two touchdowns here. Well, pretty much the poor punt was a turnover. You got great field position out of that. Another short field after the fumble, which you got to get the defense credit for that, taking that ball away but an exceptional job answering by the offense, taking advantage of those short fields, putting touchdowns on the board. Tech now in a deep, deep hole here early in this football game. There's a look at Demetrius Fleming, who's yet to have an impact today. Targeted one time, but the pass was behind him and he hasn't had an opportunity to return a kick so far because Karadzic keeps booming it deep into the end zone. This one though, was returnable, but instead a fair catch call for 
at the one yard line. So it'll be another touchback for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, and a smart decision, I think. Get the ball at the 25 yard line. He's going to have to have a 21 yard return there just to get to the 25. Good decision to start at your 25. And Mickey, now if you're on offense and you're tech, you're close to having to change your game plan and you're not even out of the first quarter. You wanted to run the football, sustain drives, use clock. Now you're down by 14 points. If you're unable to do that on this drive, then all of that is out the window. So this is the last time you're going to have the chance to come in with what was your game plan if you're successful here. Well, they do run it on first down. And that is David Gist spins forward for three yards, maybe four. They're going to spot him down at the 29. So a gain of four, second down at six. Again, wanted to control the clock, wanted to control the line of scrimmage. You cannot have turnovers. You cannot have mental mistakes, penalties that put you in long yardage situation. Thus far on their previous two possessions, they've done both of those things. Second down and six. Gist gets the call again. Good footwork by Gist, and he's got a first down out at the 37. And a little bit of moan from the Tennessee Tech crowd over something happening after the play. Here's another look at the run. Look at the footwork here by Gist. Definitely got all he could out of that. A lot of times you'll see people try to power through it. Just not that type of runner. Quick feet though, and he does pick up first down yardage. Only the second first down of the game for Tennessee Tech. Just now four carries for 16 yards. They go to him again. He's able to get around the corner and hauled in by Jeremiah Harris. Or that play could have went for a much bigger yardage. Harris able to grab hold of that jersey, kind of use a calf rope technique here. See the misdirection, and then coming back in the other way. Just good job bouncing outside. And again, it's tackled by his jersey there after being spun around, but a good pickup on first down. Something Tech has got to have. Yeah, you love the second and shorts. Second and two here. Fisher going to throw it. Pump fake. Now he will run, and they're not going to give him much forward progress. They're going to mark him as though he slid, so they're going to put it back at the 46. And they've got a penalty. Another one. Yeah, and absolutely can't afford it. And it's in the area that normally indicates holding. Holding. Offense, number 52. Mm. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. That's Trevor Stevens, the sophomore offensive lineman, and that is a backbreaker there. Yeah, absolutely can't have it. I, I mean, at worst, you, you, you've you got third down and short. Instead, now you've got second down and 15. Well, it's going to be a little shorter than that. Three penalties in the game for Tech now. And it's going to end up being second down and 12. But either way, that's terrible. Again, you had second down and two. Mm -hmm. Fisher, little, little dump off pass to Gist, but the Gamecocks are all over it. Tackle made there by Markel Benton, the redshirt junior linebacker from Phoenix City, Alabama. So virtually no gain on the play. It's gonna be third and long now. So even on the previous, previous play, it would have been third and one. So you're looking at third and 12 because of the penalty. Yeah, again, those penalties, turnovers will kill you. And boy, has it ever done exactly that for this Tennessee Tech offense, which is putting their defense, which is the strength of the team, in terrible situation against an offense that's very stout itself, and the Gamecocks have taken advantage of it. Gamecocks show pressure. 
Here they come. Fisher is going to be sacked. We mentioned that Austin P got him seven times last week, and JSU gets their first sack of the afternoon. Markel Benton again, back-to-back -back plays for the Gamecock linebacker. That's the end of the first quarter. Final play of the first quarter. A quarter dominated by Jacksonville State as the Gamecocks lead Tennessee Tech in their OVC opener 14 to nothing. And Tennessee Tech will begin the second quarter punting the football. You see Jacksonville State has scored in 96 consecutive games. The last time the Gamecocks were shut out, you got to go all the way back to 2012. And Butch, another punt here. Not a very good one at all from Hayden Olson. So that is that problem for the Eagles continues. Olson had the win behind him on this one. I thought he might get it up there and uh, have a good distance on it. JSU thought that also. Had the return man pretty deep. The ball floated kind of to the right side, which put it into the wind instead of taking advantage of the wind blowing across the field. Another short punt. Another time the Gamecocks start with excellent field position from their own 40-yard line. Jacksonville State out gaining Tennessee Tech in that first quarter. 83 total yards to Tech's 37. Gamecocks had seven first downs. Tech only had two. Zion Webb throws on first down. Kind of a wobbly pass way over the head of the intended receiver, Ahmad Edwards. Yeah, that one had no chance. Again, the wind is blowing that way. So if you get the ball at all up in the air, then it's going to sail on you as it did then. Second down and 10 for the Gamecocks with once again good field position at their own 40. Football's out of there. That was Pat Jackson's first carry of the day and Tennessee Tech may have their first big break of the afternoon and boy kid, could they use it and they are indeed gonna have the football. Well, it's a nice hit really by your linebacker. A Take a look, boom, right there. The defense. First down. Ball comes loose, Tech jumps on it. Change of momentum here. Certainly what the Golden Eagles needed. Linebacker Seth Carlisle able to recover the fumble. We mentioned Tennessee Tech was plus three in the turnover category in the win over Austin P last week. And boy, they needed to create a turnover there. So they've got their first time in Jacksonville State territory as they'll snap this at the 41. Can they take advantage? They did last week, but different story here. Fisher throws on first down. Receivers got it at the 25-yard line, making the catch that time. That's Metrius Fleming. That's his first grab of the day. He was covered by Jacques Payton. The leading receiver for Tech. A lot of time for Fisher. Take a look. Great protection by this offensive line. Fisher stands in there, delivers it right on the money. You get that much time, it's going to be really difficult to cover a receiver like Fleming for that long if you're a DB. Nice protection, nice throw, nice catch. First down for Tech. 15 yard reception by Fleming. First down at the Gamecock 26. Nice run here. This is Kurt Taylor Jr. Football came out and wound up in the hands of lineman Spencer Stackra. You've got to like the alertness <laughs> of Stecker. Take a look. This ball comes flying out on this hit right there. Boom. But nice job by your offensive lineman to come up with that recovery and advance the football a couple of more yards. Stecker's like, look what I found. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> job. You know, a lot of guys, that would have bounced off their face masks. Second and one for Tennessee Tech. Fisher on the keep, runs right into Jacksonville State's Lamel Gordon. Forward progress, I don't think he's gonna have the first down. Virtually no gain, so it's gonna be third and one. Yeah, that's how you tackle. Take a look at this. Boom, that's the end of the forward progress. 
fall off the block as well. Well, if you're Tennessee Tech, this is clearly four down territory. Uh, you've got, you have got to move the chains here. Then the way their uh, special teams have been performing so far, you definitely don't want to be trying a, a field goal from here, even though they had some success kicking the ball last week. Wildcat just takes the snap and is able to get the first down. Good hard running by Gist as he picks up the first down at the Gamecock 12. Just had success. In fact, one of his touchdowns was out of this Wildcat formation last week. Really good cut there to get to the outside because there was absolutely nowhere to run on the inside that time. First down at the Gamecock 12. Deepest penetration of the game so far for Tennessee Tech. Fisher hands off to Gist. Not much over the right side. He does get inside the 10. Gain of three, second down and seven. Well, you really, really need a touchdown. Any points would help. Really need a touchdown, though after coming up with that turnover. Two young defensive tackles starting today for JSU. Robert Johnson's a true freshman and Lamel Gordon a redshirt freshman. As a matter of fact, Butch, on this entire JSU too deep, there's only two seniors. Yeah, the, the future <laughs> bodes pretty well for the Gamecocks, you would think. Second down and seven. Fisher on the key, gets a block. It's a foot race. Fisher dives and they're gonna mark him down, what, at the one inch line? It's, it's right at the goal line. <laughs> I tell you, you gotta give credit to Jacquez Payton. Look at the foot race here, you'll see 10 coming in. Great look at it. Oh, I think he broke the plane, Nick. I think his helmet did, but the ball didn't. Let's see. That was a great view, I'd love to see that again. Let's see if we get a review. Here we go, Bush. Let's, yep. This is a great angle. Yeah. Well, the ball may have. I, I, Fisher snaps and it sneaks it in, so it's it's academic. He's in. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech. And that is a huge swing in momentum there. The turnover, the JSU fumble, and then Butch, they do march it down and get it into the end zone. Yeah, that was a must. I mean, an absolute must. You know, and this kind of is, is how the game played out last week for them. They, they were not at all having a lot of success offensively. Their defense was keeping them in it. And then all of a sudden they come up with four turnovers and, and are able to take advantage of them as they did here and turn that game around. Here is Hayden Olson to attempt the extra point out of a hole from Jacob Anderson. The extra point is true. So Tennessee Tech gets the turnover Barry Fisher sneaks it in for the touchdown, and it is now a 14-7 game here in Jacksonville. Forcing the turnover, knocking the ball loose from JSU running back Pat Jackson. They recover, and they go 41 yards in seven plays. Barry Fisher sneaks it in from a yard out. They cut the JSU lead to 14 to seven. And now they'll kick off to Jacksonville State. Boy, turning the table, JSU up 14, another short field. All of a sudden, things change completely and we've got a ball game. Olsen kicks it into the end zone, so it'll be a touchback for the Gamecocks. And now we'll see how the JSU Offense responds to Tennessee Tech getting on the scoreboard now. A little bit more of a sense of urgency and the first time that you've had the entire length of the field to go as the ball will be placed at the 25. The poorest starting field position for the Gamecocks has been their own 40-yard line. Gamecocks with 60 yards rushing in the first half as three-fourths of their offensive production have come on the ground here in the first half. 
A little quick pass out to Trey Berry. That's his second catch of the day. Love the design there. They fake to Samuel to the right, come back to their star tight end, and Trey Berry picks up seven yards. Yeah, that looks like any time you need five or six, that, that's going to be difficult to stop. Maybe something you come back and see. If not today, future ball games for the Gamecock. Two catches now for Berry in the first half. Webb reverses field, throws to the wide side, and it's going to be a first down throw and catch as that is Mike Petway, the redshirt freshman from Alabaster, with his first reception of the day, and it is a Gamecock first down at the 38. Jess, you're pretty young in that uh, wide receiver core, but they did an ev excellent job this, uh, this fall. Look like they're continuing on that pace here today. Zion Webb continues to produce six of nine throwing for 37 yards. A lot of short passes for Webb. This time, though, he's going to fire it deep down the middle of the field. Dave Russell's got it wow. at the 24 with a defender all over him. The coverage that time by Christian Watson for Tennessee Tech. But Russell, who played his high school football just down the road at Oxford High School, I just mentioned Webb had predominantly thrown shorter balls, and Butch, here's his first deep one. Yeah, you got to love the way Russell goes up and high points this thing. Only way he's coming down with it is by doing that. Great technique results in the big game. First down for the Gamecocks at the 20. They snap it quick, and Josh Samuel gets very little yardage, actually no yardage. It'll be second down and 10 at the 20. Webb finds Trey Berry. I tell you, that that does have the look of being there all day anytime really they want to go to it. They're playing his own defense. Nobody up tight on Barry. Barry catches the thing and falls forward. He's got three yards. <laughs> a six foot seven guy falls forward. Yeah, that's about two or three yards, isn't it? That's two and a half. <laughs> Third down and three. Samuels going down behind the line of scrimmage. Look at the penetration by. The all OVC preseason lineman, Chris Tucker, number one right there on your screen. Big defensive play for Tennessee Tech. JSU runs the field goal team on. So Tennessee Tech to force a Gamecock field goal attempt. They'll spot it down at the 24. So Karajic attempting a 34 yarder from right in the middle of the field. Good snap, and Karajic booms it through there. So the Gamecocks do respond to the Tennessee Tech touchdown with a nice drive of six plays and 58 yards and a field goal to extend their lead back to 10 points, 17 to seven. And the 34-yard field goal from Alan Karadzic has given JSU a 10-point lead, 17-7, as we are just past the midway point of the second quarter. OVC spring opener for Jacksonville State. Gamecocks played four games last fall, went 3-1 and one in those non-conference games. You may recall that great game they played to open the season down at Florida State. Gave the Seminoles a scare before losing. This ball kind of rolling down around the field, a dangerous special team situation again for Tennessee Tech. And Butch, they're able to get on it, but they're going to start with poor field position. Uh, well, and the thing that's that's crazy about that now is you come up and fair catch it and you get the ball to 25. Instead, they let this thing hit the ground and fortunately are able to get on it. JSU close to being able to recover that kickoff. So here's an opportunity for the JSU defense. If they can come up with a three and out, talk about flipping the field, they're liable to have field position around midfield again if they can get off the field in three downs. Right, big for both teams here. Fisher, play action on first down. Nice pass out to about the 20-yard line. That is Brad Clark's first reception of the day. Sophomore receiver, six foot, 208 pounds, picks up six yards. A good throw, a little bit of a reach for Clark there, but he comes up with a catch. Needed catch, picks up seven on the play. So a good play on first down. Again, methodical 
offense by Tech, but if it results in points, that's exactly what they're looking for. Second down and four, they go back to the ground game with Jess. Nice, patient running. And I thought Jess was still on his feet, but a whistle blows. Yep, the whistle blows, it's, it's over, but I'm with you, Mickey. I thought, I never thought anything touched the ground that would have resulted in him being ruled down. Officials saw it differently. Is enough of a pickup for first down yardage. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the shin was down, the knee too, I think. So the officials got that right. And credit Lamel Gordon with the tackle, the freshman defensive tackle for Jacksonville State. But it is a first down for Tennessee Tech. Big first down, at least they get a little better field position by picking up the first. Fisher hands off to Gist. Gist ducks his head and just runs full speed into Jeremiah Harris and a gain of four, maybe five, but Gist appears to have got the worst of that collision. Yeah, his shoulder, the shoulder. Come out for an injured The player. shoulder that he lowered to, to take on that hit uh, is causing some concern right now. Great job bouncing it out, and he's quick to get out there, but watch this. That shoulder goes right into the helmet of the defender. And boy, they they really, really cannot afford to lose this young man. Mm -hmm. Media timeout. No, just is already up to 42 yards rushing here, Butch, in this first half. We'll take a break for the injured player and return to Burgess Snowfield in a moment. Back, the backup to David Gist comes in as Gist is on the sideline with the injured shoulder. We'll see if he's able to return. Taylor gets the handoff and gets nothing. Great penetration that time by Jacksonville State's Jalen Swain. Here's the previous play where Gist was injured. Yeah, that shoulder took a big hit that time. Third down and six, Fisher passes away, incomplete. It was a good throw, Brad Clark took his eyes off of it. Wouldn't have had the first down anyway, the defender was bearing down on him, but it is a catch that Clark should have made. Yeah, Fisher put it right on the money. I think Clark realized he was short of first down yardage. Mickey tried to get that thing and get upfield before he had secured it, results in the incompletion. All right, Butch, so here's another punt coming Boy, I, for Tennessee Tech. I, this is one of those that percentage-wise it can't get much worse. Or you hope it can't. We got the same punter in. Aiden Olson to kick it from his 16. Good rush, and he gets a – that's his best kick of the day by far. Fielded at the 27, though. And a nice return here by – Marco Baker. And so Jacksonville State will have good field position when we come back. 5.08 left here in our second quarter. Well, we'll keep it right here. JSU with the backup quarterback in the game, Aaron Graham, the redshirt freshman from Sandy Springs, Georgia, getting his first action of the afternoon. And he loses five yards or four yards on his first offensive possession. Designed run, great penetration by the defensive front of Tech. AC had no place to go. Graham hands off to West, hard running right up the middle by Uriah West as he runs over the would-be tackle from Jack Warwick of Tennessee Tech. So it's going to be third down and about six here for the Gamecocks. Great job up front for the Gamecocks again at the point of attack. Another gaping hole for West to run through, hard running by West. Great block by Tylen Grable for Jacksonville State. Third down and six. They go to West again, but he runs right into big Anthony, or correction, Jalen Gladney. As the Gamecocks didn't get any push that time up front. Lose a couple of yards, so here's a fourth down and 
Butch JSU's going to have to punt it away. So Tennessee Tech, big defensive series that time for the Golden Eagles. And now you've got a, a punter for the Gamecocks that's making his first punt in a collegiate ball game. This is Cole Porch, the freshman from Sylacauga. Standing back at his 26 to punt it away. Jiren Gilmore awaiting the kick. And it'll hit at the 30. And roll just inside the 20. Where Marshall Clark will touch it and down it there. So Tennessee Tech will take over first and 10 when we come back to Burgess Snowfield. And we resume play late here in our third, second quarter, I should say, three minutes and five seconds remaining. Tennessee Tech first down at their own 19. Here's a little Wildcat keeper. Nice gain up the middle for Tennessee Tech. And on the carry was Willie Miller, the sophomore backup quarterback from Pinson, Alabama. So both teams putting the backup in at about the same point here in the game. Nice run by Miller on first down. I know this guy had an outstanding high school career up at Pinson Valley, Alabama. A good run on his first carry here today. And he stays in second down and two. Miller keeps again. And finds enough daylight to pick up a first down out at the 32. So all things considered here, Butch, if Tennessee Tech, if, if nothing else, if they're able to just kind of wipe out the clock here, I know they'd love to go down and score. But all things considered, if they get this game to halftime where we are now, I think they would have to be pleased with the rough start they had to the ball game. It could be worse. You're right. Miller to throw his first attempt of the day. Boy, it's on target at the Gamecock 49-yard line as he puts it right in the hands of Metrius Fleming. So, hey, forget that. Go to halftime 17-7. Tennessee Tech looking for some more points here late in the half. Boy, and what a nice job of protecting Miller that time. That offensive line, Miller had all day. Fleming ran a deep route and made about two different breaks off of it. Takes a lot of time to run that route. 18-yard gain that time on the pass play, out to the 50-yard line. Miller to throw it again. Goes down the far sideline, well over the intended receiver's head. The Tennessee Tech sideline wanted a flag, but no flag is thrown. Metrius Fleming was the intended receiver, and Jock West Payton was step for step with it. Yeah, the, the, the Tech folks did not uh, agree with the the no flag being thrown on that that play, that's for sure. Felt like there was a a hold that took place by the the coverage guy. Still having a conversation on the far sideline as we move to second down and ten here. But Tech again moving the ball quickly out to midfield. Trying to put some more points on the board here before halftime. Snap it just before the play clock hit zero. Nice hit that time. Well read by Marshall Clark. The sophomore from nearby Mumford High School. Great read by Clark. And then an Time out. excellent tackle Time also. Out. Jacksonville State. So Jacksonville State now. Please set the game clock to one minute, 13 seconds. One minute, 13 seconds. Thank you. They use one of their three timeouts because now it's third and 12. Gamecocks looking at possibly getting it back and trying to get something done before the half. Well, you think about the, the trouble Tex had punting the football. I don't blame the Gamecocks at all. Third down and 12. But I do like the way Miller stepped in there throwing the football. If he can get some time, give Fleming and the rest of that receiver core a chance to run those routes. It would scare me a little bit. Miller two for three for 16 yards on this series. As 
Again, Tennessee the, Tech, you expect them to keep it on the ground here? And just I don't, you don't. I don't. I think they're going to go for it. If you can get some time, the way Miller throws the football, great receiver in Fleming. The rest of the guys are capable also. Because think, if you run it for nothing, JSU is going to stop the clock with a timeout anyway. Right. So. I think you put it in the air again. And Willie Miller stays in the game. David Gist, by the way, still on the sideline. No update on his condition. So third and 12. Miller steps up over the middle. Pass is almost intercepted. It was intended for Fleming. And it was Jacksonville State's Jamari Jemison who almost had the pick. Mm. Jemison is going to uh, feel bad when he sees this one on film. Great job of reading the route. Just can't come up with the interception. And now, here we go with another punt. I, I don't know, JSU's return man is looking right into the, the sun. This time of year, it's low in the sky. Be cautious trying to feel this one. Marco Baker will not attempt to come up and catch it. It'll bounce dead at about the 19, where well, they're going to spot it at the 17 yard line. So Jacksonville State will take over there first and 10. Exactly one minute to play here in the first half. Gamecocks do have two timeouts in their pocket. See if uh, Gamecocks come out airing it out. I think you do something mid range to Trey Berry or one of those other guys on a, on a crossing route you pick up a little bit of yardage then you you open things up wide open trying to get it in, in at least field goal rack zion well back in the game for this series over the middle it goes dave russell got it at the 32 he's now got two catches here in the second quarter gamecocks hustle up with a first and ten boy you talk about squeezing this one in take a look wow <laughs> That's a dangerous throw, but he comes out successful. Tried to find Russell again out at the 42, pass behind him incomplete. So it'll be second and 10, clock stops with 44 seconds. Man, that was a dangerous throw, but again, picked up good yardage. And then the next one, incomplete. JSU in pretty good field position here at the 31. Quick pass, Russell makes the grab. They're gonna stop the clock, says Russell got out of bounds at the 35, so a gain of four, third and six coming up. And the Gamecocks able to hold on to their, their timeouts, Mickey. So again, if you're able to move the chains now, you're able to start using those timeouts, you got plenty of time to get in scoring position. Well, gets it out of his hands quickly, and Trey Berry, an uncharacteristic drop at the 40. That would have been close to a first down as well. Yeah, I think Trey for sure, if he makes that catch, picks up first down yardage, big, strong receiver like he is. That one got away from him. Webb with a good throw, though. You know, most people, well, that was a previous catch. Most folks, though, you wouldn't want to throw it that high. Just the opposite with Trey Berry. Put it up there where he can reach up and make the catch with his hands. Unable to come up with it there. Tennessee Tech comes up with a big stop. So here's Cole Porch out for his second punt of the day. And this is a major shank. And so now Tennessee Tech has 29 seconds and two timeouts to work with before halftime. And they're going to have very good field position. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Uh, let's see, it's, it is going to be at the 42. From our vantage point, I thought it was going to be about the 35, and they literally would have been in field goal position when they snapped the ball. Three timeouts remaining, only 29 seconds, but, you know, you got plenty of time. Excuse me, two timeouts remaining. So now a 
Huge opportunity here, Butch, for Tennessee Tech. He's having a discussion and it's going to take a timeout. Tennessee Tech, it's first of the half. Be a 30 second timeout. I'm not sure what the confusion was there. It almost looked like Tennessee Tech didn't want the timeout, but it's hard to tell from here. Regardless, they still have two left, and they've got first down at the Gamecock 42. I'm not sure. You know, you know, that could come into play it could, here. It could. I, I, don't, uh, I don't know why you'd want to waste that time out, but again, I did not see what the confusion was. And by the way, Willie Miller, the backup quarterback, stays in the game. And a flag comes in, and... If this is a holding call, this could totally change the situation. Yeah, it becomes a situation now where you just want to run out the clock. Holding, offense number 52. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. I tell you, that was a quick flag, so it had to be a very quick hold. Well, he was about to, to get beaten on the outside is what happened. Happened to be looking right at that. And you, you'll see the defender on the far left side here of the screen. The defender beats him here, right there, and he has no choice. If he doesn't hold him, Miller's about to get sacked. But now completely takes him out of uh, scoring options, I think. You try to run the clock out if JSU doesn't use their two timeouts and force another punt. Yeah, that'll be first and 20 after the hole back at the Tech 48. Let's see how they play it. Miller looking to throw, steps to his right, still looking, going to air it out downfield, and it is picked at the 14. Boy, he had a receiver. Quentin Cross was open, overshot him, and it's an interception for Jacksonville State, That's and that will essentially half. end the first half. So Jacksonville State will head to the locker room with a 17-7 lead over Tennessee Tech in their OBC spring opener here from Burgess Snowfields. You're watching OBC College Football on a Sunday afternoon in Jacksonville. College football on this Sunday afternoon from Burgess Snowfield on the campus of Jacksonville State University. OBC spring opener for the Gamecocks. They've got a 17-7 lead over Tennessee Tech. And Jacksonville State won the toss and deferred, so the Gamecocks will get it first to start the second half. So an opportunity for Jacksonville State to score first here in the second half. Probably the last time that the return guys will be looking directly into the sun, Mickey, as it'll be behind the buildings here pretty soon. But right now, not a great spot. You see the long shadows on the field. Ball's going to be coming directly out of the sun. And Olsen, the left footer, kicks it off deep. And it'll be taken by the Gamecocks, Jamario Jemison. And Jemison returns to the 23-yard line. He runs into Miles Sperling of Tennessee Tech. So Jacksonville State, first and 10, just short of the 25. And you and I were talking during the break. Do you think we may see a little more of Uriah West and Josh Samuel here in the second half? With the way that offensive line controlled the line of scrimmage at times, I really think they, the Gamecocks are going to look to, to the run a little more often. Of course, it depends on what kind of defensive front. But right now, a standard defensive front. So look for the Gamecocks to try to keep it on the ground. Those big, strong running backs. And that offensive line, again, that at times has been dominant in this ball game. And they do start with the run on first down. Josh Samuel picks up about three. Gamecocks only rushed it 18 times in the first half for 58 yards for a 3.2 average. Throw it out, and is that a lateral? No whistle. Boy, what a big play and if that it would is, be. That's a turnover, Tennessee Tech. For the Golden Eagles, coming up with it was Jamal Thompson. And I think they've got the football. Oh my goodness, this is a 
Whoa, what a risky play. The Take a look. on the field was a backward pass, which was recovered by the defense. First down. No, that's not backwards. No, I think no. that's going to be reviewed and, and overturned. No, you got to overturn that. What a, what a huge change that would be. And great alertness by Tennessee Tech to get on the football, but there's no way this is a backwards pass. The previous play is on the further video review. You know, to the naked eye, it looked like a lateral. That was my first instinct, but I, I just, looking at the replay, I, I, I don't think it is. No, no, it's forward. But again, <laughs> we, we've seen things that we thought pretty much were for sure calls that didn't result in that. Um, but I definitely think this one will be overturned and the Gamecocks will have it third down. Just way too risky a play to run. You got to make sure if you're the offensive coordinator for, for the Gamecocks that you make sure Webb knows to get deep enough that when he makes that throw, it is never a lateral. In this case, I think he did, but next time he'll think about it a little better. Take a look. Yeah, that I mean, the ball definitely hit if you take a look at where he threw it from and where the ball bounced, it was about a yard in front of where he was standing. But you know, when you see these situations, you always revert back to the what the call on the field was because that's kind of a wild card. And sometimes you see replays and you it, it looks as though it should be overturned, but. Well, on the last replay that we had, if you look at where JSU's quarterback Webb is standing, and then where the ball hits, it's a yard four. So I don't see how having video review, you couldn't overturn this. But then again, I've seen some in the past that I questioned just as much. Of course, what a big turn of events this would be for Tennessee Tech. And it's turned into a long look, which tells you something. It's not a, it's, it, it's not a, uh, with it not being a quick decision, it means it's a tough decision. Yeah, again, to me, it looked like it was easy. But I only got to look at a couple of reviews, but it looks like they're going to leave it with Tech. Take a further review, ruling on the field stands. I think that's terrible. I mean, just from, again, the, the two videos that I got to see, the ball was definitely thrown a yard forward. Take a look. He's three yards behind the line. The ball hits and it's only two yards behind him. But now looking at that, you can't tell at all, other than you can tell it's still in front of where his feet were. But it didn't, that's not the call that was made. So now JSU's defense going to have to step up big and what a turn of event. Miller is in at quarterback for Tech. And no David Gist. Miller trying to improvise and maybe a couple of yards inside the 15. So Kurt Taylor Jr., the junior backup running back from Covington, Georgia, starts the second half. So, Butch, you were really skeptical that because of the way the shoulder injury looked to David Gist that he would return. And so far, there is no sign of him coming back in the game. Yeah, I, I didn't think there was any way they'd take a, a chance on that guy. And that is a huge loss for this team. And again, now you've got to decide what's best for your offense. And apparently right now they think the the dual capabilities of Miller give him a better shot than having Fisher in there with more of the play action type of quarterback. Miller hands off to Taylor. And Taylor, hard running inside the 10, down to about the eight. We'll set up a third and three for Tennessee Tech. Big play, both teams, and with a dual quarterback in here you've got to you've got to try to defend the pass and the run which is the kind of call I think that it's going to come from the sideline gives Miller a, a run pass option crowd getting into it here early in the third quarter they sense how important this situation is third down and three Miller on the keep, pushes forward behind that offensive line, the officials walking in and it's 
very close to a first down. Boy, it is going to be right at the yard to They gain. gave it to him, first and goal at the five, Butch, wow. Now, I think he had to get to the five, so if they ruled the, the nose of the football, broke that plane, which is exactly what they did, and I think he did. Isaac Cross, the freshman from Smithville, Tennessee, with a great pull block. And Willie Miller just ducked in behind his big 6'2", 280-pound freshman lineman and got just enough. Boy, Tech knocking on the door here. What a turn of event to open this second half. And a, fum, a, a snap over the quarterback's head. Miller wasn't ready for it, and they shoot themselves in the foot on first and goal from the five. Oh, my goodness. And could not if, if Miller had been ready, he could not have caught this one. Take a look at this. That ball was way wide to his right. Actually did a good job that he kind of out of his peripheral vision saw that ball go by. JSU could have scooped and scored on that one. But now go from first and goal at the five to second and goal at the 26 yard line. My goodness, what a, what a turn of events. Uh, back and forth, back and forth here to open this second half. So second and goal from back at the 26. Miller throws downfield and it is incomplete. Great coverage down there for the Gamecocks by Jock West Payton. Payton in exceptional position. Take a look at how he shields the receiver with his body. And a good job by the receiver to go up high to prevent the interception there. Justin Oden, the wide receiver, first target of the day for him, but Jacquez Payton was in better position than the receiver. Yep. So Butch, you just looking for enough yardage to try field goal here? I think you're in field goal range. I think they're going for it. Look for him to throw to the end zone. Miller, only a two-man rush. Over the middle, he's got the receiver down at the 14-yard line. It's not gonna obviously be a first down, they'd have to have a touchdown, the reception there by Fleming, but it does make the field goal much more makeable here. Yeah, and you cut it to a, a seven point lead if you're successful on this field goal. And again, no rush by the Gamecocks, only two people rushing, one used as a spy again because of Miller's running ability. They'll spot this at the 21, a 31 yard attempt for Hayden Olson, the true freshman. Out of a hole from Jacob Anderson. It is blocked. Gamecock defender got a hand on it. And so Jacksonville State comes up with the stop. A big, big play on special teams for Jacksonville State. Another big play in that department. And a great job getting your hand up in the middle of that defense. But this one was just kicked too low. Take a look. Penetration, hand up and a huge block there, but Olsen just didn't get any height as he made contact with the football on that field goal to tail. Umstead Sanders, the red shirt senior from Port Joe, Florida, getting the hand on it. So Gamecocks take over first and 10 at their 20. Tennessee Tech missing a golden opportunity there and here comes Josh Samuels, a good run, but a flag comes in in the area of holding. Yep, and if it is holding, of course, JSU will have to overcome that penalty to keep his drive alive. Both of these teams with a number of holding. mistakes Offense, here early. 156, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, still first down. They get Cam Hill, the junior offensive lineman from Montgomery for the hold. And yeah. cramping Shout here. out for an injured player. Early in the season, we see that a lot. Not, don't expect it quite as much with temperatures like they are here today. This is Jacob. To a media timeout. Barrett suffering from the cramp. We'll step aside for a break. Early third quarter, Jacksonville State with the ball and a 10 point lead. The Jacksonville State football. First and 10 after the holding penalty. First and 20, I should say. Here comes Samuel. And he's cut down at the 14 yard line for a short game. Good run support that time coming up from the secondary by Nyquan Washington. But should point out last week, Tennessee Tech was trailing 
Austin P 14-3 midway through the third quarter. Then they went on a run of 24 unanswered points, wound up winning that game in a wild finish. So they were in this situation a week ago. Yeah, I don't count them out, that's for sure. Missed opportunity, though, after the turnover by the Gamecocks. And they throw it right to the linebacker. Zion Webb over the middle. I'm not sure where he was throwing the football because number 18, Seth Carlisle, was just standing there waiting on it, and he returns it down to the Gamecock five-yard line. Another turnover for Jacksonville State. Webb obviously did Throwing not field, see Carlisle. First down. Has a receiver behind him, but that ball is not even close to getting over Carlisle. Hits him right between the numbers. And another big turnover for Tech here to give themselves an opportunity to get back in this game. Now you see Carlisle going to the bench. Boy, big the, play. The Gamecocks are doing everything they can to give this one away here early in the second half. So first and goal from the six for Tennessee Tech. They were here a moment ago. This is Taylor and not much at all. Just does get inside the five for a gain of about a yard. Boy, you are really asking a lot of your defense here, giving them these kind of situations to open this second half. They answered on the first one. They did not seem to come out on the field with a lot of pep. But a good play on first down. Got to do it at least two more to keep this game from becoming a three-point ball game. Miller on the keep. Cuts it up inside. And he may have should have stayed to his outside and used his legs. Instead, he cut it back. He did get down to the one. Boy. It's going to be third and goal from there. Good hard running. Like you say, he might have gotten it if he stays outside. Wow, he's close. I think they've got it marked right on the one yard line. Third and goal. Of course, the last time they're down here and they snapped the ball wide right, ended back out at the 31 or something. So a lot of crazy things have happened already here in this second half. JSU crowd into it again on this end of the field. Third and goal from the one. And we're going to have early movement, and Tennessee Tech has done it again. S shooting themselves in the foot here on Ball third start. and goal from the one. Offense, number 88. Wow. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Wow. I mean, I mean whoo, from a coaching standpoint, this is what would turn your hair gray for sure. Mm. Number 88, Hunter Barnhart, the true freshman from Oneida, Tennessee, and he comes out of the game. Well, I'm sure you put him in there for, for blocking purposes and just excited in that situation and moves early. So now you kind of lose the opportunity, even if you didn't get it on third and goal from the one, fourth and goal from the one. So it's third and goal from the six. Gamecocks with a twist up the middle, Miller, well, we're going to have a whistle, and they stopped the play. Did we have a – well, we got a flag in the end zone. Looks like delay of game. Delay of the game. Mm. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Going to back Tech up five more yards, but at least they have another opportunity because that one was going nowhere. Miller just didn't have enough time on that play. Third and goal from the 11-yard line. And remember, Tech has twice in the second half had first and goal inside the five. And up to this point, come away with no points. Snap to Miller. Fades to his right. Passes away. K Taylor catches it down at the five. It'll be fourth and goal from there, and that'll bring on another field goal attempt for the Golden Eagles. So they'll at least try to salvage three points, Butch, out of two first and goals from the five. And again, you know, last time JSU blocked it, but 
this is definitely the right decision to go for the field goal here. You have got to come away with points here after having the opportunities that Tennessee Tech has had to open this second half. Umstead got a piece of the last field goal attempt. This will be a 22-yarder from the right hash. Kind of a tough angle for a left-handed kicker. High snap, Olsen gets it away and gets it through there. So Tennessee Tech does finally break through. Three points here to cut the JSU lead to seven. Six minutes to play here in the third quarter. Well, a look at Hayden Olson, who just connected on the field goal to cut the JSU lead to 10. But I tell you what, that is a sequence there here in the third quarter that could come back to haunt Tennessee Tech. Two opportunities inside the Gamecock end. They only come away with a field goal and a great kick return here for JSU. And that is one area of the game where JSU has dominated and that is in special teams. And you gotta like the tackle by Olson. The kicker, the only guy left. Take a look at this. Here's your kicker right there. A good wrap up. I mean, give him credit. I think he actually stepped out of bounds a little before Olsen got to him, but good field position for the Gamecocks. So here's Zion Webb and company back on the field. First down at the 35. Let's see what the Gamecocks can do here with this offensive series. High snap. They hand it off to West, and he is taken down for very little, maybe a half yard. Great penetration on the perimeter there by the Tennessee Tech defense, who Butch seems to be gaining confidence as this game goes on. No doubt about that. Webb with a couple of critical mistakes to open the second half. The lateral that resulted in a turnover and then a, a poor read where he throws the ball right to the linebacker results in the interception. Defensively, the Gamecocks have stepped up, but Tennessee Tech definitely with some, some momentum on the defensive side of the football. Gamecocks run behind that big offensive line. That is Uriah West right up the gut for a gain of four. So it's going to be a crucial third and five here for the Gamecocks. West a little bummed up coming out. He'll be replaced by Pat Jackson, who had that fumble in the first half. So third and five. Webb gets it out of his hands quickly, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Braden Hill. And so it'll be fourth down, and the Gamecocks go three and out here on this series. Yeah, and I got another question. Trey Berry not even in the game on this play. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking there's got to be a, some kind of injury there that we don't know about for you not to have your key tall, short yardage receiver in the ball game on a, on a third down play like that. Think Bear Barry has only three catches today, Butch, for 22 yards. Yeah, I think he's got to have some, be nicked up some way or another, not be in the game there. Pretty good kick fielded at the 20, an immediate tackle there. Hustling down on special teams for the Gamecocks was number six, George Steele. Steele timed it perfectly on that play. Another timeout on the field. Tennessee Tech has it back, trailing Jacksonville State by seven. Nice shot overlooking Burgess No Field here at JSU Stadium. First down, Tennessee Tech as they get the ball back after the JSU punt. Miller, play action. Lobs it out to a wide open Taylor out of the backfield. Great play design, great execution. First down out at the 42 yard line, but a flag back behind the line of scrimmage. Another penalty coming against Tennessee Tech. Holding, offense number 52. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. What a great call by the offensive staff for Tennessee Tech. Defensive end for Jacksonville State just got so much penetration that the offensive lineman felt like he had to hold him, just outquicked him to the point of attack, Mickey. Resulted in the, in the penalty, but negates a very well-designed play that was also well executed. Now eight. Tech starts in a hole again. Eight penalties in the game for 60 yards against Tennessee Tech. JSU only two penalties for 15 yards. And they're there. I mean, you saw on the replay, 
it was definitely a hole. Instead of first down at the 42, it's first and 20 back inside the 15. Set up a little screen pass to Taylor on the other side, but the play was defended very well. Zach Woodard hustling up to stop that play from going anywhere. Woodard read it well, didn't put the hit on him that he would have liked to, but certainly a, an outstanding defensive play. Results in no gain on the play. Boy, what a, what a huge change of fortunes the penalty was. Like you say, you get the ball all the way out to the 40 yard line. Instead, you're backed up with first and 20. Now second and 20. Miller over the middle. He's got his receiver out at the 26. Catch made that time by Justin Oden. That's his first reception of the day, second target. And it's a good gain out to the 26. He'll set up a third down and seven for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, good job by Miller finding his receiver on the crossing route. Pretty good protection this time. Take a look out of the shotgun. Miller's eyes moving around, his feet got a little bit quick there, but he was able to plant them and make the, the accurate throw and a good pickup on second down gives them a chance on his third down flight. Third down and six, Miller over the middle. Passes dropped, unbelievable. Metrius Fleming, preseason all OVC, sure-handed receiver, drops one that would have been a huge first down. At least a first down. Mickey Heat's got a gap there. That might have gone the distance. And that's your best receiver, like you say, preseason season, all conference, and you put it right on the money in the drop. And yet, with all of the things that are happening in this ball game, Tech is still right in the middle of this. And another punt. Wow, a nice one. I think they've kind of dialed in their punting now. And great coverage downfield by Tennessee Tech as they'll wrap up Marco Baker at the 21. And you know, something you mentioned in the very open of our of our broadcast today is that normally teams make a lot of improvement from week one to week two. Tennessee Tech played a game last week. They faced a lot of adversity in that game and beat the defending conference champs in Austin P. Well, Butch, they can't, they've come out today, and I don't think they've improved here today. No, in this game no, so no. Far. The mistake, it is amazing that they're still in the ball game. If JSU had not matched the, the mistakes here in the second half, they'd be blowing this, this team away. Tennessee Tech, though, will will be strong here on defense because they're no, they know they're still right in the middle of this. Pack Jackson on the carry for a gain of about three, and we have to re remind our viewers, in case you joined us late, the leading rusher for Tennessee Tech, David Gist, went out of the game late in the first half with a shoulder injury, so that obviously changed things for this Golden Eagle offense, a big loss for them. Yeah, I, and I think Samuel is not 100% for the Gamecocks. Second down and seven. Oh, huge hole up the middle that time as Jackson stays in the game. And he picks up yardage out to the 31. So it's going to be third down and one for the Gamecocks. Yeah, and this is a kind of, of drive that I, I kind of expect from the Gamecocks. That big offensive line, these tough running backs, moving the chains, trying to wear this defense down. Jackson up across the 40 before he's wrapped up from behind by sophomore defensive lineman Michael Dixon, Dixon, but a first down for the Gamecocks and one they really needed. Certainly did. Again, the momentum was all on the side of Tennessee Tech. Boy, that's good hard running by Jackson. We go under a minute to play third quarter. They keep it on the ground with Jackson. Nice blocking on the perimeter. Jackson up to the 48-yard line for a gain of five. Now this is the kind of a attack that I kind of expected JSU to open the second half with. Of course, they had some 
some really bad things happen to them in the passing game. Then now um, I, I look for them to, to run the football until Tech proves that they can stop it. Freshman defensive lineman Jacorian Wren just limped off the field for Tennessee Tech. Here's Trey Berry on the little bootleg reception. Hurdles one would-be tackler and is cross midfield out of bounds at the 49. Yeah, and again now, and again, Mickey, I'm not questioning calls and those kind of things, but you had third and short on your previous drive. Berry's not even in the play. We In the ball game, we've talked about how you going to stop that play from gaining three yards. And he wasn't even in the ball game on the third and short on their previous possession. Third down and two. They hand it off to Jackson, got room to run. First down, taken off his feet by Tennessee Tech's Jack Warwick, but another first down for the Gamecocks. That is the end of the third quarter. Gamecocks on the move here. They will have a first down at the Tennessee Tech 42 when we return to Burgess Snow Field to begin the fourth quarter. And we begin the fourth quarter. Jacksonville State first down at the Tennessee Tech 42. Sense of urgency time for the Gamecocks as the drive continues primarily with a running attack. And it is another carry by Pat Jackson for positive yardage on first down. Butch, Tennessee Tech with a 10 minute time of possession advantage in this game, but they're down by seven in the fourth quarter. Didn't really take advantage of it, had two Opportunities in this second half, only got three points, but they're still within seven. JSU doing what I had anticipated them opening the second half with, and that's running the football behind this huge offensive line. Having success, I don't anticipate you seeing anything differently until Tech can come up with some type of stop. Pat Jackson. Fumbled on his first carry of the game, but boy, he is redeeming himself here in the second half as he finally taps out now. He's going to come out of the game, but he has been very effective here in this second half. Eight carries for 54 yards, a 6.8 average. Yeah, you got your third team running back in there. I doubt that he's had seven carries in a row <laughs> before, and uh, he's a little winded right now. He was running the ball hard. Samuel checks back in. They give it to him, and he is wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage by the center of that Tennessee Tech defense. And that was not that Samuel wasn't running hard. That was that, that defensive front stood up and made a play, a stunt on the inside. Your, your down lineman went inside, and the linebacker came around outside, got plenty of penetration, stopped that play for no gain. That was a play Tech had to have. Now third and long for the Gamecock. Third down and seven. Well, with plenty of time, finds Dave Russell for the touchdown. Flag comes in, but it's going to be a face mask against the Golden Eagles. What a nice throw by Webb. Remember the last time he threw the football was an interception. This time stands in there, delivers it right on the money and a nice job after the catch of getting into the end zone for the touchdown for JSU. Zion Webb had plenty of time on the play. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. The result of the play is a touchdown. The 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Wow, you get a 15 yard advantage on the kickoff now. That can't hurt if you're a Gamecock fan. And here's Karadzic on. And he is now perfect on extra points, three for three on the day. As Jacksonville State, the drive of the game so far, 78 yards and 11 plays, capped off by the touchdown throw. Webb to Russell, Gamecocks back in front by 14. Well, Butch, a big tip of the hat to Dave Russell, the Oxford High School native. What a game he's had today. I tell you, five receptions, 81 yards, and now a touchdown to boot. And Karajic boots it out of the end zone with the help of the 15-yard face mask penalty. So Tennessee Tech now, still time, 13.02, but 
Well, they got to get something going offensively now, down by two touchdowns. Yeah, you really have to have something good happen here, or if you're going, you're going to have to change your game plan, start start throwing it around if you don't score on this drive, simply because it's going to get too late in the ball game. You got time to be methodical here, though. Miller is pretty much gone all the second half. That injury to Gist basically ended the day for starting quarterback Bailey Fisher, and it's Willie Miller's game, at least still to this point into the fourth quarter. Miller passes away. It's caught at the 42, and out to the 45-yard line goes Justin Oden. Ball came loose at the end, but the official will mark him down at the 44. It's good protection again for Miller. Took a little bit off of it, laid it right in there for his receiver to make an easy catch and a good gain on first down. 19-yard gain on that first down play. And the Golden Eagles hurry back up to the line of scrimmage. Miller slings it out to the tight end, and Woodard's going to get him behind the line of scrimmage as Adam Browner, second catch of the day, but it's a four-yard loss. Good catch by Browner, but like you said, probably would have been more advantageous if he doesn't come up with a catch because Woodard read it perfectly, made a solid tackle, and a four-yard loss on the play. Nice read by Woodard. Woodard's had a good day. That's two tackles for loss in the game today for Zach Woodard. And the again, redshirt junior from Thomasville. Again, a heck of a catch by Browner, but for, for a loss on the play. Second and 13. Handed off to Taylor, and he won't get much at all, maybe a half yard. What a job with the penetration there by the defensive end, D.J. Coleman. Yeah, Coleman, that was, uh, that was outstanding to take on the the blocker and still make that tackle for no gain. So Miller and company facing third and 13 now. Third and 13 trailing by 14 points. Pretty much have to have this. Gamecocks rush five, pass downfield. What a catch at the 33-yard line by Justin Oden. That is the catch of the day against tremendous coverage by Jamari Jemison. Great coverage, great pass, great protection, exceptional catch. That is excellent effort by everybody and a must play made by Tennessee Tech quarterback and receiver, offensive line, everybody executing on that play Jemison, results in the big game. Jemison even had a handful of jersey too. He sure did. What concentration that time by Odin. Miller over the middle, pass is caught down at the 18 yard line. And the catch made that time by Brad Clark. And I tell you, Miller Butch, He's in a rhythm now. Well, you give him time, strong arm, making good reads, steps into it, puts it right on the money. JSU with no penetration right now by those guys up front from a pass rush standpoint. Miller now 10 of 15 for 105 yards passing in the game. Fake keeps in trouble behind the line, will be taken down back at the 22 on an outstanding play by Umstead Sanders. Boy, that was a big one for the Gamecock. Good coverage downfield. Miller was not able to get rid of the football when he wanted to. Take a look right here, he wants to throw it. Nobody open, then the pressure just too much results in the sack. Sanders with the blocked field goal attempt. Now that play behind the line of scrimmage. Four down territory, no question, though, for the Golden Eagles down by 14 here in the fourth quarter. You got to have a touchdown out of this drive. Second and 14. Miller, a little jet sweep. 
And nice run that time by Quentin Cross. JSU felt like their defender got tackled on the play, calling for a hold. Flag didn't come out. So a big third down play now. Like you said, Mickey, obviously this has to be four down territory. Field goal's not going to do you any good here. So third and six. Football spotted just inside the Gamecock 15. Trips formation to the right for Miller. He's looking that way. Goes it up toward the end zone. Got a receiver open. It is a, did he hold on? No. Thought it was a touchdown. Brad Clark was open, had a step on the defender, Jemias Presley, but could not haul it in for a touchdown. Throw maybe just a little bit too far out in front. Looked like he was going to make the grab. In fact, he should have made the grab. Had the ball, didn't hold on to possession through the catch though. Yeah, it ends up being more reachable than I had thought from our angle. That ball should have been caught. A must, must either first down pickup or a touchdown on this play. Tech's going to use a timeout to try to get it right. That'll be their first timeout taken here in Previous the second play half. play is under further review. There's no timeout charge to Tennessee Tech. No, I don't understand that. That gives them a free, I mean, you did, well, you know, it's smart by the Tech coaching staff, I guess, because you get a free timeout, but that definitely was not a, a catch. We'll take a break while they review the play and return to Jacksonville in just a moment. Well, here we go, fourth down and six. Tennessee Tech needs to reach about the eight and a half yard line to keep this drive alive. Miller steps up in the pocket, delivers the pass and it's picked down at the two yard line, intercepted by the Gamecocks, Nicario Harper. Great job by Harper. I actually think if Miller decides a little bit earlier to take off and run, that he's got room, tries to make the off balance throw. Nicario comes up with the, the interception. Huge stop by the Gamecocks. Miller obviously frustrated, but I tell you, this young man has grown up some today and just a sophomore he has a lot of ability. He does, without any question. But a part of that ability is going to have to be mature, maturity after making those mistakes. Look at Uriah West. It is a foot race now. And getting the angle on West was Jamal Thompson, the defensive back from Tennessee Tech. An explosive play for the Jacksonville State running game. That'll change field position quickly. Runs over a would-be tackler and then nothing but daylight in front of him. And Butch, this game is now shaping up into the game you thought. Jacksonville State now 177 yards rushing today of their 302 total yards. That's the longest run of the day for Jacksonville State. And that's the advantage I thought the Gamecocks would try to exploit coming into this game. Samuel, now they're doing that. They just keep pounding it now. Samuel gets nine down to the 16. I don't think there's any question what the strength of this football team is on the offensive side, and that's a running game. You make the defense adjust to what you do well, then it opens up the passing game. Uriah West the leading rusher with 106 yards. Pat Jackson with 58. Short gain here down. Very little yardage gained. It's gonna be third and one. Well, Gamecocks wouldn't mind if they took six minutes to get this in the end zone. <laughs> they definitely want to get some points though. 
Boy, Tech cannot say they did not have opportunities offensively in this second half. And yet, they've only scored three points. Some confusion. I think JSU's going to have to call a timeout. Dave Russell didn't know where to line up. Timeout. Jacksonville State, it's first of the second half. To be a 30 second timeout. Definitely better to get to get that right from a again a coaching standpoint. Call that timeout. Get things right here. You don't want to make some kind of critical mistake and give Tech another opportunity. Boy, again, you go back and review this film from a Tennessee Tech perspective, and you are going to be kicking yourself at all of the missed opportunities. And Butch, here's the the breakaway run, run by Uriah West. Actually updated rushing numbers. JSU now has rushed for 252 yards in the game. Uriah West, the leading rusher with 106 yards. He's averaged 13.3 a carry. Obviously that really improved his average there, that long run of 66 yards. Yeah, and again, I think when, if I'm looking to defend this ball club, the first thing that I've got to look to try to stop is that running attack. Webb has made some good throws on the day, but he's also made some mistakes. Third and one, Samuel gets it. First down yardage down to the 10. So that'll move the chains again, and, and that'll be a first and goal for Jacksonville State at the 10 yard line. The Gamecocks and ice this game if they can get in the end zone here. But again, I don't think they're in a hurry to do that. Use as much of that clock as you can. Zion Webb on the keep and runs into big Jalen Gladney. Short gain there for the JSU quarterback. From a formation standpoint, JSU definitely had the advantage on a run to the right that time. There was no one lined up outside your right offensive tackle, no one. So you automatically had the corner. Again, you'd had to check to something like that. You can just see from formation, no one outside the right tackle that time, but chose to run it inside and a short gain on the play. Samuel slams in there up the middle, gets it inside the five after a gain of five. So that'll be third and goal from the five. The 14 point lead, you'd have to think that unless you're inside the one yard line, you'd go for the field goal to make it a three score differential. But of course, first priority is trying to get this one in the end zone. And use up the clock as you can see, JSU letting the play clock run down under 10 seconds before they, they run this play. Samuel gets the call again and gets nothing. Submarining through there for Tennessee Tech. That was number three, Xavier Washington, the sophomore linebacker from Knoxville, Tennessee. So fourth and goal back at the six, so they'll bring in Karajic to make it a three-score game here. Yeah, barring something crazy like a block or a bad snap or something like that, this three extra points is big for the Gamecocks. They'll spot it at the 13, a 23-yard field goal attempt for Karajic. He's one for one in that department today. Make it two for two. So a perfect day for Karajic so far. Two field goals, three extra points. It is now a three-score game. Jacksonville State extending the lead to 27 to 10. Back to Burgess Snow Field after. Well, a good day for Karajic. Another field goal making it 27 to 10, Jacksonville State and Karajic teeing it up to kick it off. You can tell the wind has died down a good bit here as the game has progressed. And nobody has to hold the ball to keep it on the tee. A very nice spring-like day for Jacksonville State's spring OVC opener here this afternoon. Karajic nails another kickoff into the end zone. Touchback for Tech. 
They'll start first and 10 from their 25, and they find themselves now down by 17 points. Yeah, a lot of uh, things will have to happen for the Golden Eagles to get back in this one. Certainly going to have to have a big play and get a quick score to get back in it. And then, of course, onside kick and all of those things. Got to have that score first, though. Because it is a three-score game, you could even get a field goal, though, now. But again, whatever it is, it's got to happen quickly. Miller drops back, steps up, delivers a strike out to the 42-yard line. And I tell you, Justin Odin has had himself a fine second half here today. He is the leading receiver for Tennessee Tech on the day with four receptions for over 75 yards. First and 10 as they go in a hurry. Miller goes for the home run down the near sideline. Interference here going to be called against Jamari Jemison as he was defending against Metrius Fleming. And that's the play you've got to go for. So defensively, you've got to be looking to keep that's everything in front of Defense. you. Automatic first down. Obvious call here as you look at the replay. Did not want to give up the big play, so you can see the, the grab and hold there results in the penalty. Jemison got away with an interference earlier. Not that time. Two big plays and two downs. Definitely covering a lot of real estate here. Went from their 25 to the Gamecock 44 in two plays. Miller goes for the home run on the other side. Receiver stopped, expecting some different route, and it's incomplete. Peyton does a really good job of getting his body in the receiver's path where he has to alter the route that he would like to run. That's exactly what Peyton did that time. Caused the receiver just to give up on the route. Not much time, of course, being used in these situations, though, when on every incompletion there becomes a dead ball. I think Tennessee Tech. Delay of the game. Yep. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. They were trying to get a timeout on the sideline, but they didn't they didn't get it in in time. Now, I don't blame them. It, it, realistically, I wouldn't have wasted a timeout there. The clock stopped. Five yards. You got to pick up, you got to go the length here in about 30 seconds to have any kind of opportunity to come back when you've got to score three times in three minutes. Well, everybody moved, but the center didn't snap the football. So another penalty against Tennessee Tech. Start. Offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. That is the 11th penalty of the day against the Golden Eagles for 85 yards. Tough to overcome that many miscues. Well, when 10 other guys move and you don't snap it, it you kind of think maybe it's a center. Well, maybe it's a center. <laughs> Miller with time, lobs it over the middle, passes, caught, not loose, and picked by Jacksonville State's Markel Benton. And who makes the hit, Mickey? Because Ben comes up with the interception, but who makes the hit on the receiver? Right there. That is Jamius Presley knocking that, it loose. That's a big time hit. Really on the field was an interception by the defense, first down. Presley with a nice job. You know, that's a well-executed 
play by Tennessee Tech, a good throw by Miller, and then just a better play by Presley, and Ben comes up with the interception. Well, Tennessee Tech won the turnover battle last week against Austin P. They were plus three, but they haven't won it today. Four turnovers in the game for the Golden Eagles. First down throw over the middle to Trey Berry incomplete. Boy, that, this has got to be just to get your backup quarterback some experience throwing the football because you do not, you do not want to be throwing in this situation. You want to use some clock. I don't care if you have to three plays and punt. Has to be just to get your quarterback some experience. Aaron Graham is in the game. Back to the rushing attack here. And that is Jackson back in the game. Picks up about four. So it'll be third down and six. There's Graham. He's the backup quarterback coming into this game. He's 6'2", 165-pound redshirt freshman from Sandy Springs, Georgia. So Zion Webb's day is done. Webb rushed for 71 yards, was 12 of 19 passing for 125 yards on the day. Graham taken off his feet by Big Jacorian Wren of Tennessee Tech. Fourth down and short. I don't know if Coach Gross is contemplating it, possibly going for it here, which would end the ball game if they were successful. And right now it looks like that's what they're going to do. Fourth and two from their own 48. Plenty of time on the play clock. Graham looks over to the sideline and I think the Gamecocks are just gonna let the clock run down and take a timeout or take the penalty. They are taking the timeout. Timeout, Jacksonville State, it's second. This will be a 30 second timeout. Well, it looks like the Gamecocks are going to hang on and win this and not really impressive fashion. Now you've got to credit the defense with making some huge stands here in the second half because Tennessee Tech had every possible opportunity to it's come not. back and, and make this thing to actually take the lead three times. Twice they had first and goal inside the five. All right, Butch, yesterday, North Dakota State, 39 game winning streak snapped. What do you make of the FCS situation this year? It's gonna be interesting here, isn't it? Oh, I tell you, it's anybody's, it's anybody's ball. These two teams come in ranked 16th and 23rd. Gamecock 16th, Tennessee Tech after that win last week, 23rd. It is literally going to be anybody's ball game as far as winning the national championship. And a muff punt by Jiron Gilmore and the Gamecocks get another turnover. Not going to affect the outcome of the game, but nice job of coverage, alertly getting on that ball. JSU with an opportunity to run out the clock here. Fifth turnover of the game for Tennessee Tech. They were plus three last week in the win over Austin P. They're gonna be negative two in this loss to JSU. Turnovers, penalties, just a, a recipe, lot of missed opportunities. A recipe for disaster. <laughs> That's exactly what that is. Samuel in there. Big first down run inside the 10. And by the time the Gamecocks snap it again, we'll be under one minute to play. Wouldn't blame them if they just hit a knee or if they choose not to. You know, you can't, this wouldn't be running it up. The defense has to come up with a stop. You're at the nine yard line. You're not supposed to give up a nine yard run. But JSU literally only has to run two more plays. Victory formation here for the Gamecocks. They take a knee 
And that should be the final play of the ball game. Tennessee Tech had their opportunities, but Jacksonville State had the answers when they needed them. And Coach John Gross picks up another win in OVC play. As the Gamecocks victorious today over Tennessee Tech 27 to 10 in their spring OVC opener. Counting the games from the fall, Butch, JSU improves now to four and one on the season. Goes on the road for their, their next two contests. Next week, they'll be making up that game that got snowed out against Tennessee State. Tennessee State lost to Austin P today, 27 to 20 in their first ball game. Also look for a lot of improvement, I think coming from the Gamecocks in their performance next week compared to theirs this week. Well, congratulations to Jacksonville State. Winners today at home as they knock off Tennessee State by a final score of 27 to 10. For Butch Barker, I'm Mickey Shadrick saying so long from Jacksonville. You're on a winning day for the Gamecocks.